Got it. Dry as a fossil. It's all kinds of rust coming out. It's another day at Freeman's Garage, working in the garage on the 56 Chevy, and what we're doing today is not necessary to make the car run and drive, but it's still neat and it's gonna be fun. We're gonna be inside the car and underneath because we're ripping some stuff out. We are refurbishing forward slash restoring the entire parking brake assembly, which features cables and pulleys, wheels, all that kind of stuff, brackets. It's it's pretty neat. Let's pull the fenders off the car so we can see what the heck we're doing up here. Quick release. It's for racing. All right, now we can see up here and we can get this door open and in a second, I'll tell you why this is our project for today. The first thing we got to do to restore our 1956 parking brake system is get this handle all disconnected. This is the handle that you pull to set the parking brake and you use it to release it as well. We got some screws here, this bracket, bolts down on the floor. All this will need to be cleaned, painted, lubricated. In fact, let's see if it will even move. I've just been assuming that it won't. We're on the opposite side now of the firewall, and this is the cable right in here that's connected to that lever we tried pulling that did not want to move. So we got this bracket, we got this wheel or pulley, whatever you might want to call it. So that's a whole assembly there, and that's got to come apart. And that cable runs down here and down to that pulley down there. So when it gets there to that second pulley, the cable runs back that way to a big ol' big ol' mess of stuff. So when that cable gets back here to this tricky Joe Bob, it ends right here at that turnbuckle and there's a second cable right there that splits like a fork in the road and it goes to the drum brakes on each side here at the back of the car and pulls on the lever to spread the brake drums up therefore acting as a parking brake so when you pull the lever up in the car when you pull it out you pull it towards you it's pulling this cable towards the front of the car so that turnbuckle goes and when it does that, that lever that that's connected to goes like that and it pulls that forward, tightening that cable up and then that's what pulls on everything back there in your brakes. And then the spring is here, that big screen door looking honker, that's there so that when up in the car, you release the parking brake lever and let it back in. It'll pull everything back to where it was and the tension will be released on the cable. And the parking brake lever, if you notice, was, was in. It wasn't pulled out. So that's why our cables back here are loose. Let's start getting everything soaking with some Whiskey Delta because some of these nuts and bolts might be a bit of a pain in the keister. One bolt on each side. Oh yeah. Soak that up, sweetheart. Oops, I missed that. There's a bolt right there too. So I'm sure there's one here on the other side. So we probably won't be able to get any of this WD-40 in there, but we'll try. And we might as well just get some lube on this stuff too right now. This here and that there doesn't have to come apart to get this whole thing out of the car. Just this bolt and that bolt and that bolt and that bolt have to come out. But might as well get everything pre-lubing right now. 
And these down here, there's just a clip. You pop out and this will come right out. Spray all this stuff up here at the front. Yeah, I bet one of these wheels up here is just stuck. But even if we do get it unstuck, we're still taking everything apart because we want to be able to make sure we get it all clean and painted and get some real proper lubrication deep inside everywhere that needs it. Got it. Dry as a fossil. It's all kinds of rust coming out. Here's how it, okay, it's, it's all the way in. I'm gonna pull it back, listen for the ratchet. Okay, that's locking it in place. And then turning the handle counterclockwise releases it. There's no way these screws are coming out willingly. I don't have the proper tool to fit that without stripping those out on the inside. Oh, that's not, that's not too bad. Oh wait, maybe it is. Thought I loosened it. Maybe I didn't. I thought I loosened it. Oh, okay, I did. The, uh, we'll put all this back in the car when we're done refurbishing it. But we're not going to bolt it all down snug and adjust it and everything. Because it's going to come back out in a future video. Because we're putting a brand new floor in the car. Which brings us to me finally telling you why this is our project for today. And it's because what I really want to be doing is wheels, tires, and then start on trunk floor. But the thing is, is I want wheels and tires on the car first to move the car around into a better position in the garage to do the trunk floor. And yes, yes I could figure out a different way to move it around, but I'd rather just get the wheels and tires I want sorted out. But I've been having a heck of a time finding the right set of used wheels that I want. And I am about to be traveling across the entire United States. And I'm sure on that road trip, I will end up acquiring a set of wheels. I probably will anyways. I got a good feeling about it. So what we're doing is, is we're not sitting idle because idle time is the devil's time. So we're just gonna keep moving on the 56 Chevy project. We're not gonna sit around for 10 years and wait for wheels. There's another bolt hiding back here. This one's being tough. I just went around to the front and sprayed some more WD-40 on from that side. You know, this is the kind of glutton for punishment I am. I just leave this here and try working around it and just, I just suffer and I'm in pain the whole time. You know me, my head's already occupied with, what color were these screws from the factory? Is this dash the factory color? I don't think so. We're gonna have to spend 10 years figuring out what color we want to screw. But we're a long way from having to decide all that kind of stuff, so we don't have to actually put paint on the screw if we don't want. But we'll do something to keep it from rusting. Okay. 
Now to the outside. So yeah, any scoozers. Parking brake is not a top priority, you know, it's not really a high pry here at Freeman's Garage right now. Something we would be doing anyways though. So if there's nothing else we can really do in the car right now, then why not just keep moving on it, keep working on it, and knock out hours of work that well now will not be waiting for us down the road. Plus for an excuse to get into the car and work on the inside. Oh yeah, I'm taking it. Do you ever just randomly find yourself thinking about Beckley Go Templey? That's so cool how they have this set up. Pretty neato. Let's get the other little wheel assembly out now. So for that second wheel assembly, I did not lube the hardware for that on the inside. They're kind of camouflaged here. Those two come from the outside in and then those two are from the inside out. And these are pretty... Wow. You know what? This might stop us in our tracks. Because that's really corroded. A North Dakota car with brutal winter road conditions and muddy summers and springs and a, a high school kid driving this. Ow. Back then, this wrench is a little bit tighter, even though the... Oh jeez, it's probably going to slip anyways, huh? Yeah, darn it. But yeah, this car's probably been used for hunting and all kinds of stuff. So I'm sure the floorboard, especially on the driver's side, has been just filled with mud and water for extended periods of time and snow and ice. That's slipping, isn't it? Shoot. You know what I mean? All that moisture trapped right underneath the floor mat and the carpet. For years. I grabbed a six point socket. That should work better. And I wiped it, the socket out on the inside. Let's make sure we don't have a bunch of oil on the outside of the hardware here because that won't help. Wow. Let's swap that out for a 3 8 breaker bar. Now it might be smart to actually use an impact, a 6 point impact socket because that would have that that sock an impact socket would have less flex on the side side of the socket, which would probably help hold on easier to the bolt. Oh yeah, we got it. Now let's just make sure we don't break it. Yeah, it might have broke, but let's go back and forth. to kind of get it to loosen up easier. That's the magic of a six point. And I think that's the end of the six point versus 12 point argument. Boy, the bottom bolt is going to be dang near impossible. Get out of the way, speedometer cable. Man, that WD is working good. I'm going to break the bottom bolt loose before taking the top one out all the way. Because if we take the top one out all the way, the bracket might flop over and block our access. 
I gotta keep taking the socket off and turning it and putting it back on because every time I pull I'm just not being it won't line up again on the on the bolt. It's been about 10 hours. But I've played the game of well I could probably I might be able to get this bolt out faster if I got up and tried a couple different positions and did all that. But how much time would that take if I just stay put and don't start climbing around everything? If I just keep turning on it, I might get it out faster. But after five minutes now I'm thinking, eh, well, maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should have got a different angle on it. But you can never tell. You just gotta do something and keep the wrenches turning. Okay. I can't feel my legs anymore. Okay, we just got the top bolt left to take out and it needs some lubrication from the inside. Alright, brother. Come on out. There we go. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You're not gonna get this kind of riveting entertainment anywhere other than Freeman's Garage. Remember, there are two cables, the rear cable and the front cable. We're ready to take the front cable out now, but how in the world do you do it? Because your cable goes through this little hole in the firewall and it's attached to this. Check this out, this is cool. We're gonna take the pin out of this clevis. I called it a turnbuckle earlier, didn't I? I'm sorry, I meant clevis. This is giving us trouble. So we're just gonna break this pin. We'll replace it. We're gonna replace it anyways. Ugh, rust right in the mouth. Okay. Boy, a pair of needle nose pliers would sure be nice right now. They weren't in the budget. You know, I would say it's not that difficult, but apparently it is. What are those rocks coming down? And you know, at some point, I'm gonna need your help to put all this stuff back together the way it was. So, I hope you're paying attention. Put your photographic memory to use. Now watch this. Be prepared to have your mind blown. We'll pull this out all the way. Now, check this out. See the ball on the end of the cable? That right there the ball on the end of the cable. So now we just get that out. Whammo! Oh gee, there's a piece of, <laughs> we were stuck on a piece of baling wire. Why is there baling wire in here? Oh yeah, North Dakota car. And so now it's just a matter of pulling our cable out through here. And you can even do this if you want. You can just pull it right through here. You know the 1956 manual for this car actually states to uh, <laughs> to take the bolts out of that wheel that's in there, or out of both of the wheels before you do that, if you're actually going to remove the cable. But I don't think you need to do it. Or maybe that has something to do with if there was a fender on the car. You'd have to do it that way. Well, actually, that doesn't even make any sense because we didn't even have to unbolt those brackets to do get that cable through. 
we just unbolted the brackets because we're taking everything out. I don't know. I'm so confused. But how could I be confused? Do I look like something that would be confused? Someone? Snag all our hardware out of here before, before we lose it. Actually, I think we lost some already. Well, we'll figure that out in a minute. We'll just put what we got in our pockets, or what I found. We're going to start laying all our parts out now as they come off so everything doesn't get all mumble jumbled. This dang bolt just does not want to come out. There it is. Where's the washer though? Oh man. Come on. Alright, now we got to get these brackets out of here. What is that? 9 sixteenths? Yes, sir it is. Of course. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Oh! And it's loosening right up. I did not expect that at all. Wow. That's incredible. Let's try to keep the threads a little clean. Or as clean and lubricated as we can as we take this off so that we don't ruin the threads. But yeah, that's completely unexpected. Thank you, WD. Okay, now the bolt's turning, right? Yep, yeah. okay, so now we need a wrench on the back side, and then that's, hopefully we're not stuck when we do that. Yeah, it's getting a little tough to turn. I don't want to ruin these threads, so. Bring it back the other way a little bit. Get some of that crud off the threads. You know, let's take a moment to just be thankful that Chevrolet did not go overboard on these parking brake brackets because some manufacturers might have put four bolts on each side. We got two on each side here. All right, getting tough to turn again. Let's flip this around. Bring it back again. Oh, great. I need two wings to do this. Oh my gosh, it's been 10 minutes. So that bolt took about 15 minutes to get out. I guess we dropped down to half inch from 9 sixteenths to half. Now these bolts, you can't lube them from inside the car because they don't thread in that far they just thread into this brace why am i getting the feeling that these four bolts the two here and the two on that bracket why do i get the feeling that they're going to take me about 45 minutes <laughs> in total Yeah, well, maybe closer to half an hour. Nah, probably 45 minutes. Okay, don't fall on my face. Cool. Wow. It really does not... It's really not cooperating. Okay, that was too easy. Okay, I lost the wrench. Where'd it go? What the heck, man? We're just missing a wrench. <laughs> Where are you? 
Where is it? I'm under here twisting around in pain forever looking for that wrench and you're not gonna believe this. When that bracket came off, I accidentally set that bracket down right on top of the wrench. And made it invisible. Okay, we're probably gonna have the same song and dance over here, huh? Well, I guess if we get lucky, the, the bolt won't turn it on <laughs> right when I say that. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's see how much it wants to fight. Oh yeah, we got momentum. Let's go with it. It's coming out. It's coming out. Record time. I think it's only gonna take 20 minutes total. Oh yeah, it's coming out. Oh yeah. Just like it knew that it would now. Full speed ahead, Captain! More power! What happened? While we're down here, let's get the rest of this disconnected. Oh, there's no clip over here. Well, that's good to know. So here's all our parking brake parts that are on the forward end of our 56 Chevy. There's our big parking brake lever featuring ratcheting action. And this is our clevis and then those nuts, those are check nuts. And then there's our clevis pin, that little guy there. And the cable is called the forward cable. And then we've got our two pulleys and accommodating hardware. Driver side bracket, our passenger side bracket, and the rest of our parking brake system is our big honking spring. This is an idler arm, and these here are check nuts. This is the rear cable, and I actually have no clue what the official wording is for that, the springy section back here. <laughs> I actually don't know. We do got some rubber pieces that we'll have to replace somehow. And this piece here, right there, that is the equalizer. Remember that, wrestler? Get it though, equalizer. It equalizes the cable length on both sides. Check nuts roasting on an open fire. All right, just a little bit more disassembly and then we will start popping parts into the media blaster and media blasting them in preparation for paint. This is a refurbishment, isn't it? And I'm actually tempted to not disassemble this part here because it was probably all set pretty much about right where it needs to be but um, I think that would be being sloppy and we wouldn't be able to clean up every little nook and cranny very well so you know we're not gonna be lazy just uh, just remember where this was okay you get a good look at it just remember here, get a better look at all this. Photographic memory. Just remember where all this was because I'm gonna need your help to put it all back together.
Well, this is why I was thinking about not taking this apart because it's kind of... My gosh, can I not operate a... Come on, Freeman, use your smarts here. It's kind of... kind of stubborn. In fact, I got an idea. Let's start with these parts since they're right here by the glass cabinet. So we'll get all this in there. Get the equalizer in there. Nuts and washers. Yeah, we got a light in here, but I like having these ones added in here for more light. And you can move them around everywhere you want. Pretty sweet. Oh, what's going on with our, uh, get this light on. Where's the button? I do have an exhaust system set up on this blast cabinet, but the cabinet's a little leaky though future uh, improvement project, but let's get going on this. Let's have some, let's have a blast. Everything's turning out great so far. These bits and pieces look fantastic. Where it looks a little dark, that's just from dust from the media. It is actually cleaned down to bare metal, even where it looks dirty. Those threads are perfectly clean. Now we do this big old piece. Say, those look terrific. Let's do the big spring now. That's as good as I could get the spring to look, which is pretty gosh darn good. It's just, it's got some pinning. Let's do the driver's side brace and it's hardware. Well, that'll probably come off after we blast it. Paint time. You know, one of the downsides of having an all draft paint booth forward slash not a paint booth is the wind is just whipping. 
from the paint booth right through here, possibly blowing over spray back in the Freeman's garage. That and the occasional barrage of grass clippings. I'm covering up the threads on this part here because I don't want to get paint in them. My thought is to wait until the entire parking brake system is reassembled back on the car and then we can paint the threads after everything's all, all assembled because I don't want to do it before and then we jam up the threads with paint. Now, I've done it the complete opposite way before with painting things that have threads, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try waiting till everything is reassembled and then just just some t -t touch up. And that includes the nuts and the washers as well. We'll see how it works out. It's just every time I paint all this kind of stuff prematurely or before things go back together, I just end up destroying the paint on everything as well as the uh, aforementioned thread clogging. In fact, what we'll do is put the washers and the nuts on here so nothing can walk away and those thread on wonderfully. Those threads are as clean as it could be. Painting in the dark. How could this not produce a perfect result? By the way, this brake parts cleaner works awesome for cleaning parts off. Highly recommended. Love it. And did I even mention what color we're going with on these parts? We're going with semi-gloss and we're going with the, the two-in-one shampoo plus conditioner. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. Semi-gloss is what we painted everything on the frame and suspension of the car that has been painted so far. We're going for that factory look. The heat gun is a game changer. Your dry time between coats is way shorter. Alrighty, two coats on all those parts. Let's let it uh, let it all sit and dry and and cure while we move on to the front pieces. I'm not sure at the moment how I want to tackle. The lever assembly. Looks like the shaft here was probably unfinished. It's probably just shiny like this from the factory when brand new. The handle probably was painted black. Was this black originally? Because what's underneath it? Is that a, a chrome or stainless-esque finish? Well, we need to make our minds up on that. The other thing is, is can we get this apart? Because I know we can we can lift these up and we could slide the shaft all the way out of here if we can get this off. Now, I think we could probably get it out without destroying it. I just want this separated into two pieces because I don't want to blast this part in the blast cabinet in the handle of this bracket here with this piece involved because I don't want to dull the finish on this. Although we'd have to get the, well, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to take the handle off. We could just tape it. Uh-oh. Did you notice that when we took this apart? That's not good. You see that hole in the center of the wheel? It's not supposed to be there. That's completely blown out. That's junk. It's not usable. Unless we could somehow... Well, I guess we could fabricate something in the center of it, but these wheels are available in the aftermarket. You just have to not only pay for them, but you gotta, gotta wait for them, you know? And I don't have any. 
This one's all jammed up. This one's probably, and yeah, it's crooked. This one's probably was in the process of breaking apart. Well, at least we got 72% of the media blasting done because that takes hours. I spent hours on doing the bigger parts. It's the, it's the air compressor. Can't keep up. Here's what we're gonna do. All that stuff out there has to cure. This is about an hour of blasting. You can hear that air compressor a mile away and it's so late that it's almost tomorrow. And we need wheels, which probably won't be here for a week. We gotta finish this the next time, so, but I'm gonna send you to another video to watch right now. It's up on your screen. And my new sign off, I'm trying this, is keep the rubber side down. Is that good? Keep the rubber side down. Let me know. Keep the rubber side down. Should it be keep the greasy side down? That's incredible.